to preserve large parts of the historic built past of St. Louis, let alone the entire United States, the work of one person alone is just the model. That work must become the work of all concerned people together to become a real force. Larry foresaw this force nearly 40 years ago when he slowly began transforming his salvage business, the St. Louis Architectural Art Company, into an operation that voraciously collected important artifacts not for sale, but for public benefit. In 1983, at the old First Street Forum, he made a public call for St. Louis to reclaim the proposal for a Museum of American Architecture, first proposed by Charles Peterson in the 1930s as part of the Gateway Arch. St. Louis answered by ramping up the feverish demolition of the 1970s. The material for the museum would be no problem, alas. The director, curator, salvage leader, archivist, and docent, no problem either, the indomitable Larry Giles. By the time that I first met Larry 17 years ago, the museum concept had advanced considerably. The collection had become truly colossal, and it was growing daily. A panel of curators, historians, and civic leaders had assembled a sketch of a plan for the administrative structure and the programs. Larry, working with David Mesker, Steve Trampy, Donna Sharon, and Mimi Steritz, had incorporated the necessary nonprofit corporation. The only thing missing was the facility, and that's no slight to Larry's meticulously overcrowded warehouses on 39th Street and Menard. Where on Menard, after five o'clock many days, I would come around for long conversations about architecture, politics, and, well, everything. One day, Larry got the call about a promising museum facility and abandoned historic steel foundry with a stellar view of the Gateway Arch. I remember riding shotgun on a crisp morning in March 2005 to the old Sterling Steel Casting Foundry, where we are right now. As we wandered from building to building, Larry's eyes were shining even brighter than usual. He knew this would be the place. And within a few months, he was at work here every day. Eventually, he lived here, called it home. Before long, there was a new name, the National Building Arts Center. As floors were paved, structural steel refurbished, and about a million pounds of dust was removed, the collections broadened. The Brooklyn Museum took interest in the work and began making transfers here. Libraries and archives all over the country sent deaccession, bound journals, trade catalogs, and published volumes. No longer was the collection simply a regional hub. It was now a national beacon. Today, the National Building Arts Center is a dynamic work in progress. Although we cannot open the library all the way today, I think some of you took a peek with, with David Lobig earlier, we do make appointments regularly through our librarian and our first staff member, Emery Cox, who you'll meet today as well. The Sterling Steel buildings have moved by leaps. Most did not have paved floors or electricity. There was no running water when we got the keys. The collection slowly is emerging from Larry's custom crates, and you'll see some of that today. We are also at work inventorying our collections, ornamental brick, cast iron storefronts, the old St. Louis streetcar system archives, and so much more, a lot of it now digital. We remain a constant lender to local, national, and soon, we think, international museum exhibitions. I'll have to hold more personal stories in the interest of time and privacy, but I will share one thing. Once Larry told me that his biggest fear was that when he was gone, people would remember him as a person, but have little interest in what he had built with the National Building Arts Center. This is where we all step in. Just as Larry turned to me, my fellow board members, our volunteer, our staffer, many supporters, I now turn to you. You can honor Larry's life by supporting the future of this place. Come back to visit our research. Tell your friends and colleagues. Volunteer for our next event. Donate your skills. Write us a check. Envelopes at the table over here. Connect us to where our knowledge is needed. And then let Larry's work become your work, our work.